Okay, here we go. We're talking about the distributive property today. It's one of the important things that kind of lead into solving equations. So we definitely got to be able to have that ready. Um, With that being said that we have up here, uh, we have the distributive property, we have the definition that we're using for, and we have how we're gonna see it in the problems. So how we're gonna look at it um, when going over this. This gives you just the definition of how to use them. A, B, and C are just numbers or variables. Uh, you guys have done this a lot already. Again, we're just reviewing, um, but it always comes back, okay? Especially when we're solving equations, uh, slope intercept form, uh, just, uh, systems of equations. So this is kind of, we're, we're looking back at this a lot. And I know you're like, Mr. Aguilar, I've already done this a lot. Good. Okay, this is just a refresher on this. Today's homework is not that difficult. Um, you guys will have plenty of time, hopefully today, to do it. My other class didn't have any time to do it because the computer was messing up. That's no here or there. Um, but that's what we have. We have this in another slide. And then we're gonna do a couple of examples and then I'm gonna give you guys homework. Okay, so copy those down. Distributive property, the, proper, the process on which distributive, distributing the number on the outside parentheses to each term on the inside, okay. The number is closest to the parentheses. It can either be on the front or back of it. Majority of the time you will see it in front of the parentheses. So that's the one we see the most, but it can be in the back. And you will see some little examples today asking you to go back and forth with it. So I do want you guys to see it. Okay. If you guys need a calculator today, I have no problem with you guys using a calculator today. Okay. It's not going to help you out by that much because as long as you're able to, to multiply small numbers, you should be okay with that. But we do want to be able to look at how distributive property affects um, terms inside the parentheses. And again, some of you guys can do the numbers quickly by yourselves. Um, other, others take a little bit longer to do them. Um, it just really, really all depends on how fast you guys want to move through this. Um, most of the times you guys have seen it done with an arrow, the outside turned to the inside, the inside turned to the outside. Um, particularly, it's, it's helpful when doing the FOIL method, first, outer, inner, last. Some of you guys remember that, um, but majority of the time we'll just see single variables like this. Um, at the end of what we're trying to get at, we'll have distributive properties on both sides. You have to combine like terms, move values over, simplify out, and solve for an answer. Yes. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Okay. Can I move on? Almost. Okay, are we good to go? Okay, here we go. Come on, okay. One more thing that I want to go over with you guys is the following. Okay, multiplying variables is also very important when talking about distributive property. Okay, these are just some rules and notes to go by. Um, copy those down. I'm going to do an example to the right of that. So if you want to do it however you want to keep your notes. Um, one thing that I kind of want to show you is something that looks like this. 3AB squared C and we'll do four a squared 
b to the third and done something like that uh, this is just slide review this is the more complicated you'll see it but it, it kind of covers everything and it's just easy to see um, this is just multiplying one term so you can think about it as a distributed property with just one term a multiplication that's all we're doing we're grouping terms and multiplying them together okay looking at multiplying variables okay or expressions uh, multiply the whole numbers together when multiplying we add the so when multiplying variables we add the exponents variables with no exponents like our a up here that has nothing in it we can always assume that there's a, an imaginary one there okay grouping terms and list them in alphabetical order okay I'm, I'm going to kind of go by this because I want to see you guys how well you guys do, but we always put the constant term of the whole number on the front, okay, the coefficient on the front, and then we always put our variables in alphabetical order. So in this case, it will always be A, B, C. If it was X, Y, Z, or whatever, how you, L, M, N, O, P, okay, always put them in list in order. Even if, the, even if it starts out wrong, you always want to put them back in order, okay? That's kind of important. Imaginary one. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yes. Question? Huh? Okay, stretch it. Okay. Oh, it's open. It's open. It's open. It's open. It's open. Open. Can you get it? there you go there you go guys the door is always open it's just kind of the way that they install the doors is kind of hard to sometimes open up okay you'll see a difference of when it's not open and when it's like shut it's very like it, it'll be very free you won't be able to move the door much if it's locked but if it's something like that just kind of wiggle it around check it okay wiggle okay looking at here looking at multiplying our variables the first thing that we want to be able to do here are expressions we want to multiply our full numbers together, so I'm getting a three and a four. So three and four is going to give me what? Twelve. Okay, twelve will be our first one. Okay, we're multiplying our exponents together. We want to multiply our variables. So in this case, I have an a and an a squared. Okay, whenever we have a variable that's there's no exponent to, we can always assume that there's a one. So whenever we're multiplying variables, we want to add the exponent. So it's going to be a to the third power. Okay, we're adding the exponents. Whenever we're multiplying them, we're going to add them together. Okay, the next one that we have here is b. So we have b squared. Yep, we have b to the third. We're multiplying together, so we're going to add them up and get b to the fifth. Okay, the last one that we have here. Okay, C is by itself. There's nothing special about C. We do got to put it in there. It'd be C to the first or just C. Okay, there's nothing added to it. It's pretty much multiplying by itself. It's just carrying along with it. Okay, hard or easy? Yes. When it's something like this, you're thinking like this, x to the third raised to the second. Oh, okay. That's a little bit different. Yeah, this would be x to the six. 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 Whenever it's an exponent raised to another exponent, you multiply them together. Those are rules of exponents. Okay, but whenever we're multiplying them together, we just add the exponents. Okay? We're not going to have to worry about that one. We're not going to see that many of them. Um, so when we come across it, I'm going to teach you guys that teach you guys that portion too. Are we good to go? Okay, we're going to keep continue on doing this. We're going to kind of go into problems. These are very straightforward. Okay. Okay, copy that down for me. I'm sorry. Let me try to get these a little bit better for you. Here we go. A little bit better to see. You guys go. I wish I could just like cut it here and just take it. But 
I like how big it is because people in the back can see it a little bit better, right? It's a little bit bigger than the other ones that I have. Okay. But copy that down. These are examples that we want to go over. We're going to do several more at the next page, and then we're done. We're just doing distributive property. You got it? Are we okay? Okay, for the first pair that we're getting here, for the first pair we're getting here, what should I do? I'm taking the outside term and multiplying it on the inside. So we're gonna get three times M or just three M. Okay, from there we wanna take our three again and multiply it to the next term, which is negative four, so three times negative four, negative 12. We cannot group them. You're not grouping anything today. We're going to talk about that tomorrow and combining like terms. Okay. And then we're going to practice it on Thursday. Okay. Here we go for the next one. The one to the upper right. We're going to take our two, our negative two, multiply it by our first term, which is going to give me negative 6x. Okay. We're going to take that same outer negative 2, multiply it again to that positive 3y, and get negative 6y. And then we're going to take, again, negative 2, multiply it to our last term, which is negative 8. Okay. We want to be able to see how those are all related. Okay, one thing that we've got to make sure that we do for the next one on the bottom is we've got to be able to see that we're multiplying everything times 6m. Okay. So looking at the next one, we're going to drop it down. Okay. Again, we're going to take our term, 6m. Just as we're multiplying it these two together, we're going to get what? 6m squared, right? Each of those have their individual ones up there, so we add them together. We're going to take it one more time, our 6m, and multiply it again to our last term, which is negative 4x, which will give me negative mx, okay? Can't join those together. They're not like, they're not like variables. They're not the same letter so we can't add them together we just becomes mx last but not least we have our variable here what does our outside number represent what does that negative represent negative one so what we're really doing is we're just multiplying everything times a negative some of you guys are just able to see that you're just doing the opposite so negative times m squared negative m squared Negative times 3n, negative 3n, and then last but not least, negative times a positive 4. Easy. Okay, try these next problems out. Hold off, hold off before I want to give you guys just a little bit backwards. Okay, copy down the one to the right. We're going to kind of change this other one up. We're going to change this one up. Just slightly. I'm going to put this at the end. We're going to put 6m at the end of this just to show you guys what it looks like. Okay, so copy those two down. We're going to look at how those two are related. We'll solve them out just as we did before. Okay, 
The one to the left is more so the types of problems you're gonna see for your homework. Okay, you're not gonna really have to combine like terms, you just want to see you guys distribute it all correctly. Okay, for the first pair that I'm getting here, I'm seeing that this negative M, or sorry, 6M is in the back back here. It doesn't matter, we can still multiply it. So I'm gonna take this and multiply by my first term out in the front. So 2m squared times 6m will give me what? What's two times six? 12. And then we're gonna get m squared and m was gonna give me m to the, m, m cubed or m to the third power. Same thing, you guys are good on that. Um, the next term I'm gonna get here, so I'm gonna get that 6m and multiply it by negative four, which will give me what? Negative 24m, don't forget to put that m in there. Okay, just because you do it once, you gotta do it to every term. Okay, the last one to our right, the last one to our right is gonna be negative 3m here, so we're gonna work left to right. So we're gonna multiply it by 2m squared, which will give me negative 6m cubed, Negative three M times seven N will give me what? Negative 21 MN, right? They're not the same, so we can't join them. And then we have it one last time, negative three M times nine P, which is negative 27 MP. MP. I know that looks kind of weird. Are we good? Okay. Awesome. Cool beans.